let me show you guys what I got here. I'm uh, making my own little homemade tool. Uh, what this is supposed to be is going to be a uh, in-cylinder uh, pressure transducer. Uh, what that means is uh, going to be able to essentially screw this device into my where my spark plug hole goes, and I'll be able to see what's going on inside the looking at a waveform on my oscilloscope. Um, there's a couple of videos where guys made homemade ones. Uh, I watched a few online and came up with my own ideas. I did a little bit different. But uh, the way I'm doing it is with a... I bought a, uh, a 500 PSI. This is the pressure transducer. Um, I bought this online for like 13, 14 bucks off eBay. I actually bought two. This one's a 500 PSI, this one's a 1000 PSI. As you can see it comes just like the other one but it has a cable as well. But it's a 1000 PSI. And essentially I'm going to I'm going to use this fitting. This is I got an adapter here cuz this is a uh, I think this is 1/8 uh NPT thread. I got it going to a 1 1 quarter. So I, I'll, I'm going to screw this on here so I can screw this into here. But I'll get to that part in a minute. And then this right here will, will hook into my compression tester um, fitting. Just like if you guys, just like my video on my homemade compression whistle, same kind of adapter. Going to have a kit where I can just you know use the the male will be sticking out, and I can just have a quick connect female to change out all my stuff. Anyway, let me show you what I got here. Um, I have a positive and negative cable uh, coming into a project box. This is like a 2 inch by 4 inch by I think 2 inch project box. I bought some uh, cable glands to hold it, everything make it look nice. Same thing here with my pressure transducer wire. Goes to a cable gland to make it look nice and neat and hold everything. Um, the only drawback is I, I wish I would have got this cable here a little bit longer. Um, kind of, it was kind of short, and as you can see, it's uh, this one's pretty short too. I wish I would have bought that in a longer, longer cable. But other than that, though, I think this will work just fine. But let me show you what I got going on. I have uh, essentially I have my power coming in, going directly to a, a switch. Now this switch, this is um, power in, this is power out, and this right here is, is a ground wire because there's actually a light bulb inside this switch when I turn it on. So that's why there's three wires here. This is power in, power out, and that's ground. Then basically I, I have all my grounds connected together, and I have a, a ground going to my, this here is a voltage regulator. Um, coming out of the switch, I got power in, power out comes, so this would be 12 volts going into my voltage regulator, and then there's 5 volts coming out to power the pressure transducer. Okay, now this voltage regulator has to have uh, the power in, the regulated power out, and it also needs a ground. So this ground comes back to this bundle. Then my pressure transducer. Um, once I snap this in, you know, this just, this just, man, I wish it's dark. There's, there's a connector in there, there's three. Just plugs right into this. See, there's, it's keyed and there's three. So, this has the, the five volts coming in. The black wire is a ground wire. The blue wire is a signal wire. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cram all this stuff in the box and I'm going to put some heat shrink over some things and, and make it look nice and neat, but where I, when I want to turn this on, I should be able to hook this up to my 12 volt battery, positive and ground, flip this switch, and then I can tap my scope into these banana jacks here, ground and my signal wire. So that's how I want this to work. Of course, you know, this will need to be plugged in as well, but let me show you my... Uh, drawing I made here just to kind of make it make sense to you guys. 
case because it's kind of I don't know why it's dark in there kind of hard to show you guys but okay let's just say here I have a 12 volt battery positive it comes in this here's my switch and when the switch is closed there, there's a light bulb it turns on that's why I need that ground wire there but when I close the switch it sends 12 volts to my voltage regulator 12 volts in this thing drops it down to 5 volts and it needs a ground so I have my ground coming in ground goes here to the light bulb and ground goes here to the voltage regulator and 5 volts out goes to my pressure transducer and also a ground so 5 volt power in a ground and then this will generate a signal based on pressure and it'll send a signal out to my banana jack and then there's my ground for my banana jack so really it's a it's a simple simple circuit uh, I was going going to put a fuse here but I didn't really care if this thing melts down or whatever I mean these things are like a, a dollar or two you can find on eBay real cheap really I think the uh, most expensive thing was this transducer and it was like 12 13 bucks this switch was a couple bucks and this this uh, these clamps here I just uh, this was actually off my old uh, my old uh, logic probe that I bought for from Harbor Freight a few years ago that thing broke and wasn't working so I just took the uh, cable off of it and it was like a test light but it was a logic probe logic high logic low and it would light up LEDs so I just cut that off and used the cable from it um, but yeah this is my circuit uh, I looked at a couple online and a few people uh, they built theirs with a uh, capacitor right here they said that helped smooth out the signal but uh, I didn't I'm gonna try mine just like this now keep in mind uh, I'm not a uh, electrical engineer or any kind of electrical person I'm just uh, just had this for an idea and that's what I'm gonna do so I'll show you guys how it works in the next video I'll put it all together real quick and show you guys what it looks like